WHS 11 and the University of Louisville's College of Arts and Sciences recently partnered on an exciting collaboration called Weather Smart, where we explore complex weather-related material and then the experts make it relatively easy to understand. You can take a look at our first discussion, which centered around something rather fascinating, atmospheric rivers. WHS 11 and the University of Louisville College of Arts and Sciences have recently partnered on a project called Climate Smart, where we explore complex climate related material and then make it easier to understand thanks to professionals like Dr. Jason Naylor. What are you su uh, studying currently? Uh, my research expertise is more into severe weather and severe storms. Right now I'm working on a project that's sponsored by the National Science Foundation to look at how big cities like Louisville impact the distribution of severe storms and severe weather events like tornadoes and heavy rain and hail and how cities can actually modify that and create these little pockets around them that are more at risk for severe weather. Okay, I've n never been one afraid to admit to our Great Day Live viewers, I mean, my degrees are in English. I have uh, much respect for people in math and science. We've had some wonderful scientists who are have been on the show, but let me make sure that I understand this correctly. What you're saying is what you're studying is on how the actual physical city can affect weather. Right, and that's... A pro it's been known for decades that cities can impact weather. So places like St. Louis and Chicago actually have these downwind uh, rain, areas of rain enhancement. Atlanta has a similar one. So areas where they get more frequent um, rain. Uh, and I'm going to look at specifically severe weather, looking at how that might impact where you might get like tornadoes and heavy rain, but also looking at Louisville in particular. So one of the things with the partnership that you have been trying to, I guess, school those of us who are quite as educated in, in this field, are something called atmospheric rivers. It's a term I'd never heard until I knew that I was going to get an opportunity to talk to you. So first and foremost, what is an atmospheric river? An atmospheric river is basically just this stream of water vapor that's traveling in the atmosphere. And it's, it's called an atmospheric river because in a lot of ways it is very similar to an actual river at the Earth's surface, with the main difference being that atmospheric rivers transport water vapor, which is the gaseous form of water, whereas the rivers at the surface transport liquid water. Um, in fact, the atmospheric rivers can transport just as much, if not more, water than big rivers at the surface like the Mississippi or the, the Amazon River. The, the question I always think of when I hear something like that, I mean, that sounds large and looming. What is important about that? What do we need to know? What's the takeaway? Atmospheric rivers are a big part of the climate system. They're responsible for most of the transport of moisture away from the tropics towards the high latitude places. So at any given time on the planet, there might be 10 of them occurring of, of various different sizes and strengths. They're roughly about 300 miles wide and about 1,000 miles or longer in length. And they're very important in coastal areas like in California or even Western Europe. They bring a lot of the moisture that results in their precipitation. So an area like California, more than half of, the, of their precipitation throughout the year is attributable to atmospheric rivers. Fantastic. Well, there are a lot of other things that are going on in the Department of Geography and Geosciences. This is Dr. Song and DJ Biddle. Overall, it really is exciting what's happening here. Yes. And we have a great geography and the geoscience department, and we offer interdisciplinary and education to our students. And we have a Bachelor of Science degree in applied geography. And specifically, we offer four amazing tracks. One is environmental analysis, dealing with all types of environmental problems. And the second one is the geospatial technology. So we develop and use geospatial and computer technology to solve different types of the problems. And the third track is the urban analysis, is the study of cities and the metropolitan areas in the US and also across the world. The very last one is the human and the cultural dynamic. And also we offer a certificate program focusing on the geospatial technology. We gave students totally online education, giving them the tools within a short period of time they will be able to learn all the essential technologies to solve the real world problems. Absolutely, and DJ, we're gonna wrap it up with you. Just give us the scope because I know what's occurring in your department is actually happening around the world. So really quickly, just kind of put that, in, paint a little portrait for us. Absolutely, as you kind of alluded to, geographers work at uh, scales from the local to the global. 
and we have researchers that are working in the community looking at uh, issues of urban heat island um, to uh, continental scales, looking at um, uh, indigenous cultures in the Pacific Northwest and their relation to different natural systems, and then researchers working as far as um, Africa, uh, looking at the livelihoods of um, uh, subsistence farmers and their vulnerability uh, in terms of uh, the impacts of global climate change. So we work at every scale and every level, and uh, there's no problem that geography can't look at and make a meaningful contribution to. So. Well, thanks to all three of you. Appreciate that. You can become the expert. Visit the University of Louisville College of Arts and Sciences and its Department of Geography and Geosciences by visiting uofl.me slash getclimatesmart.